It's been a couple of weeks now since the release of the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity demo, and with the full game coming out in just a few days, I've gotta say that my excitement for this game has definitely not diminished at all, but boy do I have questions. Like what the heck is this? And who the heck is that? And why the heck is Link naked? Anyways, I'm going to give my spoiler alert here for those who have not yet played the demo, but if you're concerned about spoilers, you probably wouldn't have clicked on this video in the first place. Like I said, I'm making this video with only the information provided within the pre-release demo of the game, so for all I know, what's theorized in this video could be disproven when the full game comes out on the 20th. On that note, let's get started with my theories for the mysteries presented in the demo of Age of Calamity. I'm your host Andy, and welcome to Zelda. The game begins with a cutscene of the Calamity destroying Hyrule Castle at the same time when Link and Zelda were under attack at Fort Hateno. It then cuts to what is clearly Zelda's study and shows a box falling off her top shelf. Inside the box is a small guardian, our little Igboy. When Zelda unleashes her power while defending Link at Fort Hateno, the same golden light emits this diminutive guardian. It then activates and seems to hear Zelda's words from across the continent. I must protect. Immediately after, it somehow spawns a time portal. Spiraling around this portal is blurry Sheikah text, but the leftmost strand is clear enough for us to translate. This small strand has three words, with the beginning and end letters being too blurred for me to decipher. What I did get was this. We can easily fill in the blanks and realize it says, Gate of Time. I have no idea what the rest of the text is supposed to say, but nevertheless, this seems significant. Due to the lack of information from the demo and trailers, I can't come up with any ideas for this that isn't based solely on speculation, so I'm going to keep moving on for now, but I can say with confidence that this is something that has potential to be used in an actual theory once the full game releases. So for now, let's put a pin in it. After spawning this portal, a possessed guardian stalker breaks through the door to the study and tries to attack the egg boy. The diminutive guardian jukes his way into the portal, and we see clouds of malice chasing after him. In the first level, Link finds a little egg boy deactivated against a rock, and it's reactivated when Ampa tosses the Sheikah Slate to Link. We can reasonably assume this is the time-traveling guardian since the portal is shown to appear around the same area Link finds it. Later it's revealed that this guardian traveled through time to warn Zelda about the Calamity and presumably how to prevent it. What makes all this more interesting is a scene of Link, Impa, and Zelda traveling to the ancient tech lab. As they're approaching the main entrance, the camera pulls way back and shows another identical diminutive guardian, but clearly possessed by malice like all the other guardians in the Calamity. My new favorite character, Michael Jackson, <laughs> says the diminutive guardian is a unique model like nothing they had seen before. From this I infer that the diminutive guardian is either a one-of-a-kind or a very rare model. This makes it probable that these two egg guardians are either the same entities However, for this to be the case, they would have to be time duplicates, with the possessed one being native to that timeline. If these truly are the same robots, but from different times, why is the one native to the current setting possessed while the time-traveling one is trying to help Zelda? Once the full game is released, we'll know for sure, but I have my suspicions. Various cutscenes, journal entries, and even NPCs in Breath of the Wild let us know that the Yiga clan was especially active leading up to the Calamity. To understand why this is significant to our new guardian child, we'll have to recall the motives of the Yiga. In Breath of the Wild, Kato from Kakariko Village tells Link that the Yigo were once the Sheikah, but when the Sheikah were forced into exile out of fear of their technological power, some of these people fostered a hatred towards that kingdom that shunned them. These sad souls swore their allegiance to Ganon. Their sole mission is to eliminate all who stand against Ganon. The Yiga clan had become known for their cruelty and murdering in cold blood, so we know that their main goal during the events of Breath of the Wild was to prevent or kill the ones trying to defeat Calamity Ganon, such as Link, Zelda, and the Four Champions. In the memory Blades of the Yiga, Zelda had managed to slip away from Link while visiting Gerudo Town, since the law forbade males, or Vo, from entering the city limits. While Urbosa was busy helping Link disguise himself so he could enter the city without disturbing the Gerudo public, Zelda wandered off to the Karakara Bazaar where she was ambushed by three Yiga rogues who attempted to assassinate her. 
Fortunately for her, Link has good instincts and arrived just in time to save her dumb Arbosa also writes in her diary that the Yiga were plotting to resurrect Ganon and steal her powerful heirloom, the Thunderhelm. This coincides with what we learned about the Yiga from Kato, so we can reasonably assume that the Yiga played a significant role in Calamity Ganon's revival. This idea was highlighted in one of the trailers for Age of Calamity, showing quick clips of conflicts with the Yiga, but more importantly, it teases at a potentially new villain. We first see him, or her, for only a second in the Yiga clan hideout with Master Koga and a new beefy Yiga soldier. A little bit later, the shitty cloaked figure is shown in what appears to be the Lost Woods, with two Yiga foot soldiers. On this mysterious dude's forehead, we can clearly see an Eye of Malice just like the ones formed by the Calamity. This should be proof that this guy conspiring with the Yika has something important to do with Ganon's return. What I find particularly odd about this character is the obvious mark of the Gerudo on the back of the cloak. This suggests that the character has some connection to the Gerudo. However, it's literally the one thing we have to go off of at the moment in terms of the Gerudo. To speculate, I think this character might be one of the highly rare males born into the Gerudo tribe. However, since Ganondorf's conquest in Ocarina of Time, the dominant women of the Gerudo tribe may have outcast the rare males born out of spite for Ganondorf. I think this does make some sense due to the fact that Urbosa mentions her resentment to Ganon's affiliation with the Gerudo in both her diary and the cutscene after Link defeats Thunderblight Ganon. On top of all this, Ocarina of Time specifically says that a male is born every 100 years into the tribe to be king. There isn't any reference to a Gerudo male anywhere since Ocarina of Time, nor is there a known male, Gerudo, in Breath of the Wild, both pre-Calamity and in the time the game takes place. If what's told in Ocarina of Time is true, then there should have been a Gerudo male born sometime around pre-Calamity through the time period of Breath of the Wild, yet there's no mention of it. This seriously leads me to think that this edgy dude is a Gerudo outcast and began conspiring with the Yiga out of spite. Another peculiar detail to pay attention to is the glowing red device he's holding in his hands. It strongly resembles a giant ancient core from Breath of the Wild, but with a couple very minor differences. I'm not entirely sure if the subtle differences in design matter, but I'm still willing to bet that this device will play a major role in helping this villain not just resurrect Calamity Ganon, but also may interfere with Link's and Zelda's journey throughout the game. At the beginning of the second level, we see a cloud of what appears to be Malice corrupt a guardian along the side of the road, which then immediately tries to blow Zelda to bits. This is rather odd since this is well before Calamity Ganon awakens, so how could there be Malice? There's two foreseeable answers to this question, the first being through the time travel mechanic. Earlier we saw Egg Boy go through the time portal, but we also saw several Shrouds of Malice chasing after him and very possibly getting through the portal. If these Shrouds of Malice traveled through time, it seems feasible that they could have taken possession of the Guardian seen in the second level. I think this would work out alright if that's how it turns out in the final game, but I like my second idea better. The villain could be using this device which looks like it contains Malice to possess the Guardians and attempt to eliminate Link and Zelda. This would also make some sense due to his clear affiliation with the Yiga who have the same goal. But what about evil Egg Boy? If this villain truly is the mastermind behind Ganon's resurrection and has some sort of similar ancient technology, could our precious Guardian friend actually be evil? I think that this small Guardian may have been this dude's spy. Since Age of Calamity is a video game after all, and they won't make a boss you have to lose to, I think Link and Zelda will defeat this mysterious villain and free the small guardian from its corruption, but after his plan has already fallen into effect. Since Zelda has a fascination with technology, I think she collected this free diminutive guardian, which became deactivated, and stored it in her study, which then becomes the time-traveling guardian. Then again, we will just have to wait a few more days to discover how the story unfolds when the full game releases. I do already have a theory for how the time travel mechanic will affect Breath of the Wild's continuity, but I'm going to hold off on that until the full game comes out. What do you expect to see in Age of Calamity? Go ahead and share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you're new to the channel and enjoy Zelda theories, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so you'll know when we upload another video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to have you again next time.